Welcome to KJV Kid Church. My name is JC Ligar, and I will be teaching tonight on the doctrine of God the Father. But before I do anything, guys, what do I need to do when I'm up here? You in the back, what do I need to do, young man? And why should I pray? Who can tell me? Because pray to God. I mean, God. Right. But why do I need to pray? Nice and loud, buddy. I can't hear a word you're saying because this lady back there is talking. Why should I pray? So the Holy Spirit can teach you through me because without the Holy Spirit, guys, what can I do? Nothing. Nothing. So let's pray. Father, Lord, thank you, God, for this class. Thank you, Lord, that I am able to teach the word, Lord, through the Holy Spirit. Father, just fill me right now and enable me to teach in a way that is clear and understandable and everybody can grow in grace and knowledge of you. It's in Jesus' name, amen. So tonight I will be teaching on how God takes care of his creation. Now think about it, guys. Your parents take care of you. Do you ever worry that, oh, is mom and dad going to feed me tonight? Are they going to give me something to wear? Are they going to give me a bed to sleep in? Are they going to pay the bills? Do you guys ever worry about that? No. Because no. you have good parents, and you know your parents will provide for you. And in the same way, we should have that kind of faith and trust in God that when we believe on him, he's our creator, he's our Lord, that he will provide for us. And... God says, why are you going to worry about stuff? Like, what are you going to eat? What are you going to drink? What are you going to wear? Because people that don't believe in God, they're worried about stuff like that. But you have a God that will provide for you. So let us read our verse in Matthew 6 here. Jesus says, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit to his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. So again, God is saying, look, you know your parents will take care of you. Have that kind of faith in me. Know that your parents, they give you clothes, they give you food, they give you stuff to drink. They got a roof over your head. I'm God. I love you more than the parents that I gave you. Trust me. I'm going to provide for you. So seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. All right. So let us continue. God can be trusted to provide for his children. Here Jesus is saying, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Or what man is there of you whom if his son asks bread, 
we'll give him a stone. Or if he ask a fish, we'll give him a serpent. If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? Wherefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. And our last verse is in James 1, 6 through 8. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like the wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. So again, when you come to the Lord, you got to come to him in faith. Like if you, you need food, you go, hey mom, what are we eating tonight? Or dad, what's for you know, dinner? You're not, you're not walking up to them as like, mom, dad, are you going to feed me today? You know, it's like, you, your parents would look at you like, what is wrong with you? Don't you know that I love you? Don't you know that I'm going to provide for you? Why are you doubting that I'm going to feed you? And God is the same way. He's like, look, if you're a born-again child of God, you come to me in faith and say, Lord, I need this, I need that. And you pray with full assurance saying, first of all, God is your God and he loves you. And if it's something you need, you can pray and ask. Now, there is a difference between praying for a need and praying for a want. Now, if you're praying, Lord, I really want a million bucks so I can buy myself a whole bunch of stuff. Chances are God might say, nah, not for that. But if you're saying, Lord, I have a need, I need food, I need clothes, I need to provide for my family, those are legitimate needs, and you can trust God to provide for you. Now, the question is, what about people who do believe in God, but like the Jews for a time in the Old Testament, what did they start doing? They started worshiping other gods. And guess what God did? He caused a famine to happen. Now, who knows the story in the Old Testament about a famine? You got a question? What yes. does famine mean? Famine means no food. And you're going hungry. Now, again, the Jews were worshiping Baal. And Baal was... The God of thunder, and he would supposedly cause the rain. And the true God says, oh yeah, you're going to worship a statue? Guess what? He ain't got no power. I do. And God turned off the water. And guess what? It did not rain for seven years. Mm -hmm. and I thought it was three years. No, it was seven years. Or three and a half years. I can't remember. Superbook says it was three years. I think it was three and a half years. Thank you for catching me on that. But remember, God sent Elijah to a brook, and when that brook dried up, he sent him to a widow. And when Elijah showed up at the widow's house, he said to her, uh, when you go back home, can you make me something to eat? And she goes, man of God, all I'm doing, I'm grabbing a couple sticks, and I'm going to cook my final... You know, this little bit of flour, a little bit of oil, we're going to cook a bread, we're going to eat it, and then we're going to die. This is our last meal. And the man of God was like, give it to me first, and trust me, God will provide for you. And she took a step of faith. She had nothing to lose. It was her last meal. She's like, I'm going to die anyway. So she gave it to the man of God, and when she checked in the jar, guess what? The jar of flour was full, and the jug of oil was full, and... God provided for them for the remainder of the famine. So again, God will provide. But then again, when 
we live in sin and we walk away from God, God will allow famine in our life. So again, the, the, why would God do that? What do you think God was trying to get the people to do? If God brings in a famine, why do you think God would do that? To make them worship him. To turn them from their sin, to repent. Very good. And if we sin willfully, guess what God does? Who ever got spanked by mom and dad? Oh, yeah. And who liked it? Who goes, yeah, that felt great. I want another. No, nobody, right? We all, when we get spanked, we're like, man, that hurt. I don't want to ever do that again to get another spanking. <laughs> and in the same way, God will spank us using calamity in our lives sometimes, like a famine, in order for us to turn to God. And if we harden our heart, guess what? The spankings become more and harder. And I don't want to get gross, guys. But the famine was so bad in Israel, you know what the parents had to do? They had to eat their children. <gasps> yeah, that is gross. So again, do you think God wanted to have that happen? No. no. But the people hardened their heart to the point where God had to use that kind of, I, I, I can't even imagine having to do that because you're so hungry. And that looks creepy. And that's disgusting. But again, the purpose of that is God was trying to get them to repent. And finally, guess what? Because they didn't repent, God had to send King Nebuchadnezzar, an ungodly man, who came and he destroyed the temple and he took them all into slavery and God has to use extreme measures sometimes. But the moral of the story is if we repent and we serve the true living God and walk with him in sincerity, like I said, we're not going to be perfect. We're going to blow it. But when we sin, we confess our sin but we never turn away from God, saying, God, I no longer worship you. I'm going to worship this nice little statue here with <sighs> eyes that don't see, with a nose that don't smell, with a mouth that don't talk, with hands that don't grab, with ears that don't hear, with feet that don't walk. But my rock here makes no demands on me to live a godly life. So I'm going to worship a piece of rock. What do you think, God? Okay, oh he's going to like... Band over. Wham! Ah. So, anyway, who knows the story of Elijah? They had a contest between Baal and Elijah. And Elijah said, okay, you prophets of Baal, you're 450. Here, you call upon Baal, and let's see if God will light, you know, bring, or Baal will bring fire from heaven and light the sacrifice. And they were calling on Baal, hear us, send down your fire, oh Baal. And they took knives and they were cutting themselves and making themselves bleed, trying to get Baal's attention. You know what all Elijah was doing? Hey, scream louder, I don't think he can hear you. I think he's on the toilet or I think he might be sleeping. Come on, call louder. And they were dancing, they were all <laughs> bleeding everywhere. Wow. And Elijah finally says, Are you guys done? Okay, my turn. And he prayed, Lord, show your people you're the true God. And fire went whoosh. Yep. And the people were like, the Lord is God, the Lord is God. And Elijah goes, uh, 450 prophets of Baal, come on, I, I got something to show you. And he took all 450 and... <laughs> Killed every single one of them. Wow. That's the way you deal with cancer. You got cancer, you cut it out. And then all the people worshiped the true living God. And God said, okay, let me turn the water on. And it started to rain. The famine was over. This is how we like to kill the Yeah. I have a question. When you have, when 
healthy when healthy people have cancer, do you have to cut it out to live? Uh, well, you know what? If you got gangrene, you know where your limb is rotting. Yeah. If you don't cut it off, it'll infect the rest of the body and you'll die. Ew. But sometimes you have to amputate a part of your body so the rest of the body can live because that one piece is going to kill the rest of the body. And it sucks, but sometimes you got to do what you got to do. Gangrene. It's where, you know, let's say, uh, yeah, how, how can I explain that? Uh, you know, like you get in an accident and you got a big open wound and it's turning all nasty and yeah. gross. If you don't take care of it right away, it'll go bad. Mm -hmm. And when it's too far gone, then they got to cut it off. Yeah. But it's better to lose a part of your limb than lose the whole body. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. again. That's how sin is. Sin is like gangrene. Yeah. I know, it's a happy topic to teach in kid church, huh? Yeah. You got a question? Yeah. Is that why people um, vote, like, vote someone who's not really like the Christian or something? Well, that's the cool thing. If anything happens to this body, like, I'm getting old, and guess what? My vision is going bad. It's going dim. If I, some very unfortunate thing, if I lose my vision and I go blind, I'm going to be upset. I'm going to be sad about it. But I'm also hopeful for the future that when Jesus comes back, he's going to give me a brand new body, and I'll have perfect vision. I won't need glasses. If I'm losing my hearing, I'll be able to hear perfectly. I'll have all my teeth again. I won't have a big fat gut. I won't have stinky armpits anymore. Yay! You know, so I'm looking forward to this new body. Right now, this one, not so much. So again, the future is looking really, really good. But right now, eh, I got aching back. I got flat feet. I got stinky breath. It's like, yeah, this sucks to be me. Huh? You think flat feet are regular? I think you're supposed to have an arch, but that's neither here or there. Do we have any more questions? So again, the moral of the story, guys, is as a believer in Jesus Christ, God is your father. If you have a need, you pray and you ask, trusting that God will provide your needs. Again, not necessarily your wants, the, your needs. And again, the verse that you need to remember, first of all, is seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. So, let's tell a little story. Who's ever heard the story of the... Okay, good. Pastor Barry's here. Uh, give me a couple minutes still. We're good? Keep going? All right. So who knows the story about the, the contest to jump to the moon? What? Hannah? There's a contest to jump to the moon. Sharon, come up here. You and me are going to jump. Uh, what? All right. <laughs> now, you and me, we're going to try to jump to the moon. If you can make it to the moon, I'll give you a billion bucks. So on your mark, get ready. This is going to be funny. <laughs> yeah, on your mark, get set, jump! Oh, guess what? I jumped higher than you. You know why? Because I'm taller than you. It doesn't but did, did I yeah. did I meet the standard of the moon? No. No. It doesn't matter. But what if God provided us with a rocket? And it's a free ride. The rocket's name is Thunder. Jesus. Mm -hmm. And we say, you know what, you and me trying to jump is kind of silly. The standard is too high. And gravity is what do you think gravity is? It pulls us down. Uh-huh. Whatever comes up must go down. Yeah, but let's call it sin. Now, I might be really good in the morning, and I might really be good in the afternoon, but by night I might have done something that I sinned. So I jumped. But gravity pulled me back down, and the higher I jumped, the harder I fell. Oh! How do you know that? The standard of God for heaven is what, guys? 
To get into heaven, what do you think you have to be? Christian. Perfect. You have to be 100% perfect. perfect. But nobody's perfect. Exactly. So that's what that means. Me and her were trying to be good enough to get to heaven by jumping. That is religion. But you did nothing. What the religion heck? says if you're good and you try really hard, you can jump your way to heaven. But gravity keeps pulling us back down. But again, Christianity is God gave us a rocket. And we simply get on board the rocket. The rocket takes us to the moon. And what do we get? The billion bucks. Does that make sense to you guys? All right. So, Olivia, can you bring me my water? Who's ever heard the story of the cowboy? I've never heard of it. All right. A cowboy is riding into town. He's riding a horse going, <laughs> and guess what? As the cowboy is riding, a rattlesnake jumps up and bites him in the leg. Ow! And the venom is going through his blood. Yeah. And guess Don't what? Yes. He's seeing all these really cool colors and he's got a warm, fuzzy feeling. He's like, whoa. He goes to the doctor. You, you're my doctor, get up here. Yeah. Or no, you're the cowboy. And I say, son, that snake bite is gonna kill you. You need the antidote. This antidote can cure the snake bite. And what does he say? You know what, Doc? I believe this antidote can cure me. And I know, I know I need to take it. But what do you do? You go sit down. You say in your heart, I know I need to take this antidote, but I'm enjoying the warm fuzzies, the cool colors. You know what that's called? The pleasures of sin. And the antidote is Jesus Christ. Who is the snake? The devil. The devil. The devil. Boo! Venom? His venom is what? Sin. And sin, <laughs> sin is killing us. And who's the doctor? The preacher. The preacher tells us Jesus Christ is the antidote. You must be born again. But you're thinking in your heart, come on, I'm young. I got plenty of time. Do you think death is a respecter of age? Did you know death can grab any single one of us at any time for any reason? Yeah. yeah. So what should you do? Take it. Take the antidote. Mm -hmm. You're really going to take that antidote? It well, is tasty. It's just water. <laughs> oh, so tasty. <laughs> so again, we don't want to play around, guys. We don't want to play around with our eternal destiny. If you're not saved, you need to get right with God and say, Lord, I am a sinful person. I need a Savior. Come into my life. Forgive me of my sins. Make me your child. I believe on the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, and ye shall be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. What's a sin again? A sin is breaking of the commandments. Have you ever told a lie? No. Yes. The ninth, well, you just did. The ninth commandment is, thou shalt not bear false witness. Like in the court of law, I said, well, 35 years ago, this guy did this to me. And you're lying through your teeth. That's bearing false witness against somebody else. And did you, have you ever taken something that didn't belong to you? Even something small? That's called stealing. Mm -hmm. How about hatred? Have you ever hated somebody that made you so mad? You're like, oh, I wish you were dead. A little bit. That's hatred of the heart. And the Bible says, whosoever hates is a murderer, and no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. The fifth one is, honor your father and your mother. Has anybody ever talked back to mom and dad and disobeyed? A little bit. Just a little bit? Yeah. So guess what, sweetheart? You have sinned against God. 
Mm -hmm. And the wages of sin is death. And God sends sinners to hell. But what did God do for you so you wouldn't have to go to hell? He died on the cross. Exactly. God took all your sins upon himself, went to the cross, and died. And before he died, you know what he cried out? It is finished. The penalty, the penalty that we deserve, we deserve death and hell, but Jesus took it on himself on the cross. He died, he was buried, and on the third day, what did he do, boys and girls? Ray. He rose from the dead. Amen. And now he says, whosoever believes in me, I give you eternal life. So you get to go to heaven, not because you're good, you're not, but because you believed on the righteous one, the Lord Jesus. Even if I didn't come to church, I could still believe in him. What happened? Even if I didn't come to church, I could still believe in him. You know what? Church is where we go to gather together because we love him and we want to worship him together. But it's not the building. Church is the people. So we gather in a building and that's nice. But wherever two or more are gathered together in his name, there he is. He's right there with you. So I don't have to go to heaven, but I mean, I don't have to go to church, but I can go to church. Yeah, that's the way I feel about it. I don't have to go to a building. I get to go to a building and worship the Lord with other believers that I love. I care about you guys. I don't have to come here. I get to come here. It's a privilege. So, after that nice little swig of water, I'm going to pray. Do you have a question? Okay, anybody got a question before I pray? Okay, how about I get the shush, the whole shush, and nothing but the shush while I pray. All right, Father, thank you so much, Lord, for tonight. Thank you, Lord, for this teaching on how you, Lord, will provide. You're our Heavenly Father, and we can trust you, Lord, to provide for our food, our drinks, our clothes, all these things, Lord. You told us to seek first your kingdom and your righteousness, and all these things will be added unto us. So, Father, we just pray that the Holy Spirit will just fill us and enable us, Lord, to worship you in a way that would just make you smile. And, Lord, we love you. And it's in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen.